Hello guys, thank you for tuning in to Big Fins Cars and Cycles. So today I want to discuss a foolproof diagnostic method to tell you whether or not your problems with the TCM or the clutch inside the bell housing there. I've had multiple people lately who have uh, clutch stuck applied codes, whether or not it's clutch A or clutch B. I even had a couple people who went in and replaced the clutch forks and the clutch and the slave cylinder and they still have a clutch stuck applied code and transmission overheating on a, for a couple people, they get that message on the dash. You may have codes P07A3, P07A5, P287A for example. And I just want to explain the method I gave them which helped them uh, figure out that they had another issue going on. Alright, so your clutch is stuck applied or you're, you're getting a transmission overheat message after replacing the clutch. Either way, you, you um, want to figure out whether it's the clutch or TCM. Okay, step one, you need a scan tool. You can either get Forescan or an Autel, something along those lines. You want to pull up live data. You want to watch data. Um, live data are called PIDs, P-I-D-S. You want to look for the PIDs for input shaft speed sensor A and B, I-S-S-A, I-S-S-B. Um, they may also be called clutch slip A and clutch slip B on your scan tool. It just depends on the scan tool. The next thing you're going to want to do while monitoring those two pits there, start the engine, uh, let it run and park. Park, not drive or neutral or anything. Those two pits should say zero. If you're uh, reading RPM, if it's showing 800 RPM or something like that, then your clutch is dragging, one of your two clutches. ISSA indicates would, uh, clutch A would be slipping if you're showing RPM on clutch A, ISSA. And if ISSB is showing RPM, then uh, your clutch B isn't fully releasing. Okay, yeah, that's great and all, um, but how do you know whether it's the clutch, the clutch fork, the TCM, the clutch actuator? All right, so turn the engine back off. If you're showing RPM on ISSA, go up top unbolt the upper clutch actuator, pull it out of the transmission case and set it aside, leave it connected. If you're showing RPM on ISSB, then go on underneath the car and take the lower clutch actuator off, leave it connected, just pull it out of the transmission case and set it aside. Go back in, restart the engine, and monitor those same PIDs. Do you still have RPM showing or did it drop to zero? If it dropped to zero, then without a doubt, your problem is either the TCM, the wiring harness, or the clutch actuator. You can swap the upper and lower clutch actuators to see if the issue switches to the opposite clutch. And if it does, re replace both clutch actuators. And if it stays the same, replace the TCM. Okay, but let's say you pull the actuators out of the transmission and there's still RPM showing on the same uh, PID there. That means without a doubt that your issue, whatever it is, is inside the uh, transmission with the clutch, clutch forks, or the slave cylinder. That would be what's causing your um, issue there. I'm just going to do a brief summary of this once again here. The ISSA and ISSB PIDs, or also clutch slip A and clutch slip B PIDs, are going to be showing you how fast the input shaft or the clutch is spinning at idle and park, which should be zero. If you're showing RPM, pull the actuators out of the transmission, and if the RPMs drop to zero, then there's definitely a control side issue with a TCM or an actuator. Since you're pulling the actuators out, that eliminates that as a possibility if there's still RPMs showing. Because if your actuator's not fully releasing its, you know, itself, or your TCM is not, the driver's messed up and it's not able to fully command a release, then uh, by pulling the actuator out, that clutch is going to release itself. It's not going to be stuck partially applied because of the faulty uh, clutch actuator or TCM. So this is just a foolproof way to uh, let you know whether your issue is with the clutch or the TCM or an actuator. And this is a great way to help you diagnose your issue. What, like, let's say you had a clutch stuck applied and you went in and you replaced the clutch and the forks and you still got the same code. So this is what I recommend to people to do in that instance, and uh, hopefully this helps you out. If it does, feel free to leave a like. Um, ask any questions you have in the comments below. I answer questions pretty quickly. I also have an active uh, Discord and Facebook group, uh, Facebook group to 
uh, help with your questions there. So have yourselves a great day, and uh, thanks for watching.